Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, I am so excited to have this next speaker on stage. He is one of the smartest video editors, the smartest creator, the smartest person in helping creators build businesses. Roberto Blake, we are incredibly lucky. We had him here yesterday on our AI session. He's amazing. He knows more than almost anybody I, than, than anybody I know in the creator space about so many different things. And he's going to talk a little bit about AI editing, but I'll bet you get a lot of other good nuggets of wisdom from it as well. So, Roberto Blake, we're honored to have you here and have a microphone. All right. Thanks, everybody. And so I'm assuming this here is going to be my clicker. So welcome back to those. He was here yesterday for our panel on AI Critics. Great. It's so good to see so many of you back here. Fantastic. So I'm here to do something in particular that I think is actually very important. I'm here to eliminate all of the excuses that anyone's ever had when it came to being on multiple platforms. You need to be platform agnostic. Do not be loyal to a platform. You're not married to it. You need to be everywhere all at once. And now you can be. And the thing is, this is something that a lot of people struggled with, and I would know. And how would I know that? Because whether you're a smaller creator or whether you're a business, whether you're a brand, the reality is there's only so many hours in the day, and one of the biggest time sucks is decision creep in terms of knowing what you're going to post, where you're going to publish it, when you're going to publish it, how you're going to style it, how you're going to edit it, so on and so on and so forth. And I would know that because I've been a solo content creator for well over 10 years now, and I have personally, by hand, edited more than 2,000 videos individually by myself. I do not recommend it without a doctor's note. And so I feel that it's important to bring up that we're in a place where you have to recognize whether you're a solo creator, whether you're trying to be part of a team that... The reality is editing is an arduous task that takes a lot of time. When you're editing by yourself, it could be all the way to 10 to 20 hours just to edit a 20-minute video, asking you to then go through that same video again and find and select clips and edit them to cater to different formats, different um, platforms, different contexts, different audiences. It is just too much, especially if you're doing it all by yourself. And then what's the answer? Oh, well, I'll just hire someone to help, someone that I'm going to have to now invest tens or hundreds of hours in training to understand how to be a mini-me and how to cater to my whims and taste as I sit over their shoulder being frustrated and avoiding the temptation to just edit it myself. Really, that's what I'm going to do. So, oh, and then beyond that, I'm going to go through this all over again five more times as I build a team for scale? No, 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 no. I'm not doing that. <laughs> so that's where... Our good friends over at Opus Clip comes in, and this is where the magic of AI video happens. No more excuses, and also no more time sucks. No more decision creep. It is over. Thank God. And so I have to address the elephant in the room. Hugh here is still concerned that AI is coming to take their jobs, coming to take our jobs. Anybody? Anybody? Oh, great. We convinced you yesterday. Fantastic. All right. So the reality is this is not here to take away anyone's jobs. It's here to take away your frustrations. It's here to take away the delays and decision creep. And hopefully one day it also will very easily take away all of that extra noise that's not helping my presentation at all. So the thing is, this is here to be your assistant, your video editing co-pilot, your good friend and comrade. And, this is going to allow you to make the best videos possible out of footage that you already have. One of the biggest bottlenecks for creators is being able to curate and select their footage. And see, ultimately what happens is you need to be able to do that and then recontextualize it for every platform. That is a lot of thought and a lot of effort and being able to have something that is able to take that burden off of you and then deliver the best video possible to your audience and reach them wherever they are. Not where you wish they were, but wherever they are. That is what is made possible with Opus Clip and its suite of tools. 
So imagine that you already have a long form video, an interview or something that you've already shot. This is going to curate it and find the best clips possible out of that video. It's going to auto reframe it for you so that it has the context of who is speaking and it also can add additional context with B-roll. And then, of course, our favorite, the animated motion captions that we all know and love so well across TikTok, Instagram, so on and so forth. And so... With all of these tools at your disposal, it also takes away some of the technical limitations and barriers that you or your team would have. So this is going to save you in terms of all those bottlenecks when it comes to either your own capabilities or when it comes to training someone up. This is something that just takes that right out of the equation. And so ultimately, as a result of this, you're able to go ahead and take your existing content library this is able to find those highlights. Who here has sat there and already know that they had a video, but because they had to clip it and get highlights, they had to rewatch an hour long video and basically waste their time just to figure out what to grab, what to clip, what to cut. That hour is now gone and it's now reduced to mere moments of just waiting for the AI to do it for you. And the thing is, since it's not going to sit there and get tired, agonized, be like, I've heard this already, it might actually do a better job. Not because AI is inherently better, but just because of decision fatigue that we as creators have. And because, frankly, some of us, if you're watching your own footage, do you really want to sit there and sit through your own voice all over again? Gary did this once. So then it's able beyond that to help you with being able to automatically post this to multiple platforms, your platform of choice, being platform agnostic. However, if you still want to do some final tweaking and advanced editing, it does have that ability as well for you to export to my favorite, Adobe Premiere, as an XML file. So the reality is that this is something that doesn't even paint a picture of the future. It's happening right now. Over 5 million creators using this in eight months, just eight months, me being one of them, being one of the first early adopters. This is something that is already saving creators time, frustration, and money. And not just creators that you already know and love, people that are wildly popular like Valuetainment with Patrick Bed David and his team, um, Grant Cardone, Scott Galloway, but also media giants like Univision and the NFL are already using Opus Clip to go ahead and to curate, enhance, and distribute their massive libraries of content. And so for those of you, whether you are a content creator who, like me, has made hundreds or thousands of videos, or you're here and you're with a, a media entity that might have hundreds of pieces of IP that has hundreds of videos per IP in its back catalog, this is something you can take advantage of and will allow you to take those pieces of IP, find the best highlights possible, and turn those into viral nuggets and win again in social media syndication across multiple platforms. Be everywhere all at once, but for real this time. And so when it comes to this, you also have the ability, like I said, it's not necessarily here to completely eliminate anyone's job, but it is here to make that job easier, better, less frustrating, and to produce better results. And this could be used primarily for those who have large archives to eliminate the bottleneck within your archive when it comes to curation and finding those clips, those selects. This would have been a round-the-clock job that someone would have to do, spending 40 hours a week just finding clips that are candidates that could be used for repurposing. No more. This is something that now is an arduous task that can free that person up to do actual creative work instead of grunt work, instead of technical work. And so, as I said, it's not here to eliminate your job. It's here to get rid of frustrating, arduous tasks that robbed you of your creativity and your energy to begin with. And the results speak for themselves. Imagine being able to spend 60% less time but getting three times the output with 90% savings on cost. You can't really argue with the numbers. You know, data never lies. If you torture it enough, you'll sing whatever song you want, but it doesn't lie. And so what's next? What's the future of AI video editing? It's multimodal video intelligence. And I know that's a mouthful because I had to practice saying it five times before I came on stage. 
And so ultimately, with this being your co-pilot, it's going to be able to grab the context of a moment. It's going to be able to understand what's actually taking place in this video by getting a grasp on the – whoops, skipped ahead there. It's going to be able to get a grasp on what's actually taking place in the video. You have a moment. You have the Cavs game. It's going to be able to understand the common, the conversation taking place between the commentators. It's going to be able to understand the action taking place. It's going to be able to understand the positioning of the scoreboard. It's going to know the cheering of the crowd. It's going to know the perfect moment to clip and to understand where the tension and the drama in the story is. And it's going to find the best video possible that it can get from all of that. These are decisions and the judgment calls that a video editor would have to make on their own. And yet, it's going to be done for them and get that perfect moment. And so, as a result, I think the future looks very, very bright. I know that a lot of people are not optimistic about AI. But what I believe is that it can get us back to storytelling. It can get us back to creative direction because we're not going to be agonizing over technical work in the same way that we were or grunt tasks like curation and clipping. And then as a result, we're going to be able to tell better stories and be able to make sure that moments we have are not lost and that they're able to be shared more easily because we won't be suffering from decision fatigue or from technical limitations. And this is something that's already happening because, as we said earlier, over 5 million creators are already using this. And it hasn't even been a year, and we're just getting started. So I, of course, am in the business of helping creators, and I'm here to answer any questions and to help all of you. So I'm going to be at the Opus booth right after since we don't apparently have time for Q&A unless they tell me we do, in which case I'm happy to stay up here as long as it takes. But beyond that, I also want to invite you guys back yet again at 1140 tomorrow for a demo at the Opus Clip booth so we can show you this in more detail and you can see it with your own eyes and see it happening in real time and not just here with what we've placed on the screen for you. You'll be able to see it for yourself. I also want to remind you that in your chair, you should have one of these, which gets you a free month of Opus Clip Pro, so you can check it out and so you can use this for your own content, see the benefits, see if it's something that interests you going forward. And so that is what I have for you today. Of course, I will answer any and all of your questions. They can tell me right now if I have time for Q&A and if I buzz by that. I got five minutes of Q&A. All right, I'm that good. I got five minutes of Q&A. You could also connect with me in all social medias at Roberto Blake. I talk about content creation, monetization, the creator economy, content strategy, ideation, all of the things. And again, I'm the poor son of a gun who had to edit 2,000 videos by hand by himself and not outsource it. So uh, if there's a problem, I've already faced it by now, you would think. And somehow I'm still here. Somehow I've maintained my sanity. So Q&A, I think we have other mics somewhere uh, that people can run. You got a mic there for me, Connor? Excellent. So we can run a mic. Who has questions? I'll answer them. We've got five minutes. Then I'll answer the rest at the Opus booth. Gentlemen in the back. Yes, sir. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing awesome. How Great are you? presentation, by the way. Thank you so much. Um, can you point this at shared storage? existing storage or do you have to upload files to it fantastic question so if something has a publicly available link specifically if you have a public available link like i do with youtube you can actually link to it paste there and it'll start the import you can also manually upload it from whatever device that you have connor do we have a direct link to google drive yet yeah we have google drive dropbox vimeo uh pretty much wherever you look cloud storage your content we can plug it in directly uh with media brands you can also we're also grabbing directly like from their Octo Cloud or whatever their cloud service is. Yeah, All right. Easy to integrate. Oh, we answered that for you. Thank you so much. Yep. Basically anywhere. Um, so do we have another question in the crowd here? Anybody? Don't be shy. Yes, sir. Excuse me. Does it generate the uh, captions automatically? Yes, it does. It actually generates the captions automatically for you. You actually have the ability in the edit, if you see something wrong, to correct it. And you can choose from your own style of animation from any of the templates available. You also can customize that. Choose your own branding. Choose your own colors to, to match it. And you can actually save your own design template as well to use over and over and over again. So great question. Thank you very much on that. Uh, Connor, we have another one up here, and I think we had somebody in the center and then someone over there. Well, 
Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, Is it on? There we go. Examples you showed, uh, showed people using nice cameras, nice audio. Will this also work coming off of an iPhone or other yes. lower grade items? Yes, absolutely. This will still work if you're using. The question was, we have a lot of people with fancy cameras. Will this work if you're using an iPhone? I would argue the iPhone 15, especially the pro versions, are fancy cameras as well now. And, uh, yes, you can use that, and you can still get very similar results in terms of that. But I will remind everybody, when it comes to any tool, what you put in determines what you get out. So you put gold in, you get gold out. You do less than that, well, we know how it goes. Yeah. For things uh, like thought leadership, we're using it a lot. A lot of people oh, are using it. We've got uh, more things like that as well. Yeah. No, we've got this gentleman over here and everything. By the way, I'm a I'm a hardware and software guy. I'm a total actual nerd. Uh, you know, I probably own um, one of every camera here. So <laughs> logic would tell us that some form of audio fix, video fix, maybe is going to get rolled out in the future. So- so one thing's rolled, one thing's rolled out is actually AIB roll, which actually can spice up your footage a little bit. In terms of audio enhancement, it's something that is an ongoing conversation and I am pushing the most aggressively from it out of everybody. So, uh, don't be surprised if that shows up very soon and everything like that. And the thing is, um, Connor, if it doesn't show up soon and everything, you'll be hearing from me. Okay. I'll survive. We're trying. It's complicated. <laughs> That's what she said. Um, um, Yes. Hi. Um, are there any plans to do live clipping anytime soon? So straight from live streams, uh, or because right now it's just for on-demand and recorded content, right? Yes, but if the live stream has finished processing and you have it available and it's publicly available, you can directly take the link, copy paste, and it will start clipping that. So um, I've done that right after my live streams uh, from YouTube once they're done processing. So yes. And then, well, I have one one more question on the sports that you're going to be uh, supporting. Is it uh, NFL first? Is it like what what's coming when it comes to sports? Yeah, sure, Connor. Yeah, so we're focusing on like uh, the what I like the big five to start, right? Um, baseball, basketball, soccer, football, and um, hockey. Um, and then uh, you know we're definitely working on like doing all the Olympic sports and everything like that as well. Um, you know, it's really going to be on a, as an on-demand basis, right? So we're talking to all the sports leagues. Some are already working with us. Others are, uh, you know, we're still in talks with. But, you know, a lot of it is just about being able to legally get access to the footage and be able to use it. Otherwise, we're going to be using a lot of, like, high school sports to build our models, which is not optimal. Is there anyone else? Anybody else? Are you going public? I don't know. You tell me how much you want to invest. <laughs> Hi, Roberto. Um, nope. When it comes to uh, actually throwing your clips in there, do you find yourself more times than not fine-tuning the clips, or do you find yourself accepting most of the clips that already have been? F- fantastic, fantastic question. So me being somebody who uh, unfortunately scores very high in the Big Five on being neurotic, unfortunately, um, I like to tweak almost everything, but the thing is, I actually found that with this, I'm only doing tweaking maybe 20 to 30% of the time, but when I do, it's very minor. For me, it's a lot of times what the start and stop point is just for emphasis or that I want to tweak it because I think it would make a good loop specifically, or there's like a word that I specifically wanted to stop on, but that's really it for me a lot of the time. I don't have to actually do a lot of the tweaking beyond that. One of the best things I found with this is um, it does a better job of auto reframing than um, the native Adobe Premiere Pro does on auto reframing when I uh, clip the short form vertical. Um, it's reframing. Uh, Premiere Pro, I love Premiere. Um, I love the Adobe team. But the Premiere Pro auto reframing tool, I just found it was not nearly as precise as this. And that was um, a really great relief to me that I don't have to do any extra work. Uh, for me, it mostly came down to if I have a weird word or name in the captions, then I would have to deal with that. Um, or I would have a specific place I want to stop and start, and that's a minor tweak, and that handles it really quickly. So for me, if it even gets it 80 90% there, and then I have to te- tweak the last 20 10%, that's fantastic because I don't think I would have even started to begin with if it wasn't this easy. So, now nah, that's why I experienced. That's just my stuff personally, but like I said, I'm hyper-neurotic. I'm a perfectionist. I'm going to want, always want to tweak something. Thank you. All right, last call, last call, last call. Anybody else? Anybody? All right, so other than that, I'm going to be right here, right here, over at the Opus booth, answering any and all of your questions. Again, I want to invite you back. 
1140 for a presentation where we can show you this with actual uh, footage in real time. Thank you, everybody, for showing up again. Thank you so much to everyone who attended my panel yesterday. And I've really been – thank you for making my first NAB show the best ever. Thank you so much.